What are you going to do when your galaxy is overrun by ruthless aliens? I don't you know. Buy a gigabyte you're motherboard. You're going to get a gigabyte <laughs> motherboard, and you're going to defend your galaxy from those aliens. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Cam Dozer here, along with Asimo Cutie. Now, we do want to just quickly clarify, it did look like we had a, a just a little bit of an inaccuracy on our bracket graphic that we took uh, before the break. So we are going to clarify here. It looks like it's going to be Trump and Roger and Calento versus Lemurian. In the <laughs> in the semifinals, whereas uh, before the break we had it as Colenso versus Trump. Just want to clarify, it is in fact going to be these matches. Yeah, our wonderful admins called us stupid, slapped yeah. us across the face. Well, that's right. And then uh, said, these are the real brackets. Yeah, they're always taking care of us, those admins. So now, with Trump versus Roger... Anything you can say about this matchup as far as maybe giving the advantage to one player or the other? Roger has had a lot of really close games, a lot of really close matches that have come down to game five or um, just really close ga individual games as well, whereas Trump had a pretty smooth ride through yeah. his, his, his wins yesterday. Uh, the one thing, though, playing a best of five already today, Roger, he's warmed up. Sure. Um, he's, he's familiar with his decks uh, since he won the series, he, he's played all three of his decks already today. We saw last week the player that automatically qualified for the semifinals lost in both semifinals. Uh, m probably maybe because they just weren't warmed up. So hmm. I hope Trump took some time to, to play a little bit with his decks uh, to get himself in the, the mindset to, to play some, some competitive Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this is going to be a close one. And uh, judging by their decks here, nobody really has a, a big advantage. There is a chance for Trump to sort of run away with it if he gets good matchups. Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, this one is probably one of the ones that he wanted to get. It's mech, his Mech Mage right. uh, versus Druid. And Mech Mage is really great versus Druid. The only way Druid can really win this is if they get really great start mm -hmm. with the, either Heavy Ramp with Innovator Wild Growth or just have removal for days right. <laughs> in their opening hand. So then, if you're the Druid and you're going up against Mech Mage, what's the mulligan you're looking for? You probably want a Wrath in there. Yeah. You almost always want a Wild Growth. Yeah, Wrath, Wild Growth. Keeper? Um, uh, keeper, yeah. Keeper's fantastic. and Or something big with the Innervate. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you want Wrath is the most important because you need to take out that Mech Warper right away. Right. Because Mech Warper comes out, you get a turn 2 Spider Tank, turn 3 Pouted Shredder. There's not really a way that you're going to come back from that as a Druid player. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need answers for that first, for the Mech Warper early on. All right. And, of course, the Mage going to probably mulligan just as you do in any old matchup. Just give know. me that Mech Warper. Give me some nice good mechs to cover get this the whole thing card started. Except for the, the mana cost and just get everything get rid of everything unless it's one or two. Yeah, pretty much. Not going to probably see anything too wild there. So it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup, though. I think, hmm, I don't really know who I think is going to win this one. It's really hard to say. Yeah. I actually think Roger's going to win. Do you? Mm-hmm. Okay, how come? I'm going with that whole momentum thing. All right. Uh, a lot of people underestimate the power of momentum in competitive Hearthstone. When a player's on, when they feel good, right? Uh, it, it says a lot about how they play. They take risks that they wouldn't have otherwise taken. They play more aggressive in certain matchups. And I think that's usually the way that you, you win more consistently. Mm -hmm. And since Roger has already won that best of five to get today against Tom, who's a fantastic player, really strong player. He's feeling good. Sure, sure. He's like, my decks are great. Yeah. I, I won, and especially in Conquest, I won with all my decks. Trump ain't, <laughs> Trump ain't got nothing. <laughs> well, we'll see. There's definitely something to be said about that, too, because Hearthstone's such a mental game. It doesn't require any sort of insane dexterity for your fingers or anything like some of the other games yeah. out there do. It's really 100% mental. And yeah. I was actually talking to Life Coach about that earlier this week, and he had some really interesting thoughts. He said, the mind is everything. It is what separates me from the animal. You know, my body is useless. Look at my body, and then look at that of a lion. <laughs> you know? And then he took a sip of his herb tea. Yes, exactly. So if Roger is in a better mental frame of mind right now, then, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. makes sense. He would uh, probably have the advantage then. Yeah. Mechanics are underrated in Hearthstone, though. I was talking to Lead Paint, and he said that you really need good concede mechanics. Oh, okay. Yeah. He said he used to be a competitive World of Warcraft player, mm -hmm. and then his computer broke, and so he couldn't keep up with, like, the heavy mechanics. 
<laughs> and then and so he worked on his ability to concede before his opponent gets in the last point of lethal mechanics. Oh, nice. Yeah. So Very good. You got to anticipate too, because sometimes your opponent <laughs> is going to purposefully wait for it to rope. Yeah. Because. Well, if you're one of those guys, I don't know why you do it exactly, other than to bother me. Yeah. So you got to really kind of try to yeah. deny that last point on the beatdown quest. Or your ability <laughs> to get a boot mm -hmm. in the garden. Oh, yeah. Your ability to time the rocket with your lethal. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm a, more of a fan of just commit the honorable Sudoku, <laughs> if possible. I'll uh, ping myself in the face if I'm playing mage, yeah. no problem. I've even put down Akanai and pinged myself as a priest. Yeah. Pretty yeah. rough. So just so you know, guys, as well, it looks like Trump needs just another minute or two here um, before he's going to be ready to play. He is almost ready, I'm being told. So do you think maybe he's taking this time to <laughs> psych out his opponent? Is he, like, icing the kicker here in Hearthstone? Yeah. <laughs> he's he's on his tablet right now, like, trying to play a couple games with his... <laughs> With his with his mage, like oh, I forgot to practice this morning. <laughs> let me let me get in a couple matches, but um, I think this is a little bit early for Trump. Mm. He just starts streaming like what around twelve, around around noon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm being told the Mulligans are ready. Here we go. Game one. And uh, yeah. All right. He's got Odd the wild growth. growth already. Roger does. So you got to feel pretty good about that. Swipe usually isn't as powerful against mech mage as it is against other aggressive classes because a lot of times you're only able to, to clear one creature with it yeah i was gonna say unless they put down the clockwork gnome you know yeah the clockwork gnome is probably oh, realistically the only time now that <laughs> is disgusting that is an <laughs> insane hand that's the second time we've seen trump in a row with the mech mage get one of those hands that you look at and you just wonder, is there any way that he can lose this game? Yeah. Innervate Shade is a great way to stop it. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can kill the first thing. Yeah. Mech Whooper comes out right now. You can kill it. Um, and that's <laughs> actually a pretty big deal because you can wild go at the next turn as well. It's whether or not he can keep up with all the other threats that are going to be laid. Right. Yeah. And we'll definitely have to see. It's one of those plays that... Uh, in the matchup as the druid versus sort of aggro, you want to reveal that shade early because sometimes the shade getting some sort of a two for one trade is actually better than having a big seven seven shade later on in the game when you've already taken so much damage. Yeah. And it's a tough play because he wants to. Yeah. Yeah, what's he thinking about here? Is he debating probably to coin the mech warper or not? Yeah. Or even maybe since he sees the shade to coin the Annoyatron now. I, I think if anything, he would if he coined, he would play the Mad Scientist. Okay. Because um, most likely a, a zombie child would have come out on turn one if it was available. Right. And that's about the only good target a, a uh, druid can give to a mirror entity. Uh, but goes ahead and plays the Cogmaster. This is a smart play because next turn he can hide his Mech Warper behind an Annoyatron. Mm-hmm. All right, and taking the safe play to revealing the shade to get the Cogmaster out of the way early. Wow, oh both my. Mech Warpers. Oh my. So you Mech Warper, coin Mech Warper, Anoyatron. Yep. Oh yep. my gosh, Trump, you are too good at top decking in the Mech Mage matchup. Yeah. Wow. He doesn't have any mechs anymore in his hand to benefit from that. Like having Mad Scientist and Mirror Entity in your hand is mm -hmm. not that great. Yeah. But uh, this isn't that bad for for Roger, actually. He's got both wild growth, so he's going to ramp up. Next turn, he can drew to the claw. Mm -hmm. He clears the Anoyich on this turn, and he'll have to trade in a Mech Warper plus a ping to be able to kill this. Oh, no, just, no, the, just mech the Mech Warper will be fine here. Yeah. Or Frostbolt. Or even good. Frostbolt. Um, I actually. I feel like I'd mirror Entity and just let him have one Mech Warper. What yeah. Because Mirror Entity, I feel like Mirror Entity is really strong against my Druid deck. Yeah, especially since he just ramped up. Mm hmm. Exactly. You want to make sure that uh, whatever strong creature he's going to play next, you're going to get one too. Yeah, exactly. Three mana for a five drop, no problem. Yeah, sweet deal, buddy. Yep. This is actually uh, putting in charge mode mm -hmm. and making a trade like that is really smart play. Definitely the better option. 
Dr. Boone's gonna come out next turn. Mm-hmm. And that's Trump actually, even in spite of that start. Yeah. He's already out of cards. He's too. already out of cards. You can't play Antonitis for three more turns. Realistically, usually four or five more turns until you have a spare part to get the immediate effect out of it. Yeah, at least with the Clockwork Nomi, he's going to get one of those spare parts. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's at least going to turn it into a fireball. And here, I mean, this is at the, the point in the game where you just sort Ooh. of have to get a little bit desperate mm -hmm. as the Mech Mage. Um, he'll probably just try and go face with everything he has in the next couple of turns. You can't play board control no. in the later stages of the game as a mech mage. Cross your fingers for some top decks. Yep. All right. Roger stabilizing oh. here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Ancient of War to refill his hand. Exactly. This is going to be an uphill battle from this point moving forward for Trump. Oof. Not sure what he's going to be able to pull out of his hat to do this one. Blast Mage can't even activate. It's just a 5 4 body right now. <laughs> what to do? Ugh. What to do? <laughs> Pink face. Well, he's going to get the, uh, the mirror entity out here mm -hmm. just so he can try and get something. Right. But. really is just well, such a rough spot. Yeah, Roger could wind up with uh, two ancient allures here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like mirror entities he's wondering sort of if he's already got them. it with Savage or Swipe. Does he? So that would be 7 plus 9, 16 plus the Swipe. Damage. It's just, it's short. Yeah. Actually, no. He does have it. Wait. With Hero Power Swipe. 9 plus 7 is 16, plus the 3 damage from face is 19, plus yeah, the swipe. Yeah, he's counting it. That's 9. Yeah, he does it. That's exact lethal. All right, there you have it, Roger. We can count. <laughs> yeah, we did it. <laughs> we did it, Reddit. We did it. We right. got one. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> we got one. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We still questioned ourselves yeah, yeah. almost the whole time. We're like, wait, wait, wait. Wait a second. That can't be right. <laughs> I don't know. If I we know. say it's lethal, it's definitely not lethal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Trump in can't feel very good about the way that one shaped out too because after having that start that yeah. explosive and powerful of a start only to get the druid to 24 health by the time he stabilizes yeah oh that's that that was a rough matchup not gonna lie yeah roger had i mean just doing druid things had innervate <laughs> both wild gross in his first five cards yeah um having that innervate shade is a really big deal because mm -hmm. it's similar to wrath and the fact that you're able to deal with the first creature, whether it be Cogmaster or Clockwork Gnome, uh, not even Clockwork Gnome because you just hear power it down, Matt sure. Warper the most though, mm -hmm. um, and then he was just able to ramp up anyway with the with the wild growth. He played that exceptionally well, um, yeah. playing into the mirror entity with the charge due to the claw. Mm -hmm. um, that was sort of the turning point because that was the, the play where Trump was hoping to get um, a foothold, right? Uh, but he really just didn't get much of anything from the mirror entity. Yeah, absolutely. Using that shade quite effectively, not getting greedy with it or anything, just mm -hmm. uh, says, all right, I got to slow this down. And if I do, then I'm in pretty good shape. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right, so now as we move into match two, Trump, stick with the mage, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's not really any reason not to. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got good matchups against mostly anything that Roger can throw at him. Right. Uh, Warlock, Mech... Actually... Yeah, Mech Mage does pretty well against Warlock because they can just have burn. Mech Mage is fantastic against Rogue as long as Rogue doesn't have a ridiculous starting hand. Right, you can just keep putting on that pressure. And here it is. Roger's going to go with the Rogue and uh, Trump sticking with the Mage. And Trump has also teched in those uh, Water Elementals. That's so right. That just increases the effectiveness of his matchup against Royal Rogues, mm -hmm. Paladins, and Warriors. That must have been... I mean, that. The more I think about it, the more I realize what a great anti-meta tech choice that really is. Yeah, for sure, because he knew a lot of people. I mean, even it's good against Druid because right. it negates their hero power. Yeah, I mean, you still see warriors all over the place in tournaments. Rogue is obviously everywhere right mm -hmm. now. Um, and even Paladin, still a really well-represented class. Yeah, every, I love it. every single player besides Tom had a Rogue, a Paladin, or a Warrior. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, that really tells you something. Yeah. And even Tom had a druid, so. And he's got the chugga chugga. Yeah. In the starting hand. I 
If he can get that thing going and keep it safe, well, it's going to be difficult with SI7. If he can uh, get it down to two health. Mm -hmm. SI7 agent keeps it great with the coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, Lothep as well. Lothep yeah. is... Yeah, in this matchup, really yeah. important card. Especially as Mech Mage. Sometimes you, a, a, a rogue will set up following turns. Mm -hmm. um, with, like, he'll dagger up and hit something, set up the, the Blade Flurry for next turn, or um, just make big setup plays that are usually pretty obvious, pretty telegraphed. Uh -huh. Low dev can't just protect your board. It just locks the rogue out of being able to do anything because most of their turns are spell-based. Right. Even SI7, in order to combo it, usually they use a spell. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Mech Mage getting out to this kind of standard early start. Got some minions on the board already. Mm -hmm. And now Roger's got to figure out how he wants to deal with this. He's got double sap, double prep in his hand right now. So um, prep fan and knives into SI agent. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's pretty clean. Yeah. Well, it's not the cleanest. Uh, but this is even better because he can deadly poison and Yeah. I don't know if he wants to do that, though. That's a little bit wasteful. Because the SI7 agent is going to trade into the spider tank. If he doesn't, and he'll have the deadly poison to be able to hit in Blade Fury. Now, I think what he wants to do here is actually dagger the spider tank, SI7, the, spi uh, the spider tank. That way he's not going to wind up giving his opponent an SI on this turn. Yeah. Oh, but he chooses just to dagger up instead. Okay. If you SI7 agent a, a mad scientist, mm -hmm. you get a SI7 agent from the mirror entity. Right. Like it, it's because it pops on the same turn. Exactly, yeah. yeah. This could be a pretty juicy blade flurry, but I don't know if he. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is. This is. What is he going to prep? Yeah, what is he going to prep? <laughs> I guess it's going to maybe... <laughs> oh! Yeah, that's one of the best targets you can get from Piloted Shredder. Yeah, absolutely. Especially as a mech mage. Yeah. Synergies for days. He can eat up the... No, he has to Blade Flurry. Yeah. He can eat up the Mirror Entity as well with the Blade Flurry, but I'm sure he wanted that extra two damage from the SI agent to go to face. It's really not that big of a deal. It's just a little bit of a nuisance. Mm-hmm. So now Roger really needs a sprint at this point to kind of get back into this game. And I think Trump, knowing that, drops the Lotheb. Yeah, Lotheb. I mean, he has no turn. What are you gonna Dagger <laughs> up. He could have coined. Yeah. And then pass. <laughs> Coin pass. Uh, but he can put out both Chugga Chuggas here. Mm -hmm. It's going to get our... Well, no, that's a little bit reckless. Um, but if he well, sometimes you, sometimes putting out both chugga chuggas is the right way to go mm -hmm. because you're taking heat off your other snow your other other snow chugga right. I was gonna your, say, can you get rid of with both your second? Of them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do see he already has a second blade flurry in yeah, hand. Yeah, but he saw a blade flurry, but so right. you can be pretty safe about flooding the board a little bit when you see that first blade flurry in the first ten cards. Yeah, because it's unlikely that he'll have the second. Right. Okay, Roger, hmm. he's got these pieces, Yeah. you know, but he doesn't have all of the pieces he needs. Yeah, no sap. Sap doesn't really do anything against Mech Mage because uh, they'll just replay it the next turn. Yeah, no problem. And you're effectively, you're not really buying yourself time unless you're playing creatures. Mm -hmm. So sap here would not really do that much. And, I mean, he's taking a lot he's of damage. He's already 15 just from, health. Yeah, just from dagger hits. And against a mech mage. With an Antonitis in hand, mm -hmm. plus a fireball. He doesn't really need that much burn to close out a game. Nope. And a clockwork gnome. And he's gnome. got a clockwork gnome now, Whoa. so he can get the Antonitis going on turn 8, potentially. Yeah, if he gets the, the finicky cloak field. Oh, that's the, that's the dream right it's there. It's game over. Yeah. Yeah, because he's putting them at 14 right now. Yep. Two fireballs. Two fireballs. Plus paying he, he just one, one of these guys yep. lands. And in order to take out both of these targets, he has to hit one of them. So this is just. Yeah, Roger still can't find a sprint. Has to sap. 
All right, what's it going to be? Is it going to be that cloak field? It really doesn't matter what it is. Reversing switch? Because yeah, I'd still either do way, it. he's going to have two fireballs in his hand <laughs> yeah. outside of a heel coming out. I This turn, he doesn't even have to play Archmage yet tonight. He can just snow trigger an oil tron and... Hmm. Um, but th this is I the think most reliable I, way. Yeah, I think I'd set it up this way as well. Um, haven't really seen the heel bot or anything out of this yeah. rogue, so pretty much guarantees the win right here. Yeah. Sprint's not going to do it with only one mana left, realistically. Yeah. Even with coin, there's no way that he could get gain a, uh, enough health. Yeah. He only knows that there's one fireball in hand. Well, but even knowing there's one fireball in hand, I guess, okay, it, with the sap, that's true. Yeah. I was going to say, because if he just shoots one, that makes it into second. Yeah, but that is going but to be the game. Yep, GG. Trump evening up the series yeah. with the Mech Mage. Yeah, the Mech Mage is going to find a win sooner or later. Yeah. Against Rogue, it's it's just so hard for Rogue to be able to deal with that. A lot of times they're taking face damage just from trying to remove the board. Mm -hmm. He even had both Blade Flurries in, in early in his, on in his deck, in right. his hand early on, but... It just didn't matter. Yeah. And he didn't get to use those blade flurries in any sort of an aggressive manner no. either. It was just strictly, wow, got to buy time, got to slow this guy down. And Trump just kept bringing more and more pressure on. Yeah. All right. So moving into game three, Trump finds the win with his mech mage. What's he got to choose next? I think it's going to be the paladin. Yeah. Warrior seems to be like that last class that mm -hmm. players are like, oh, I got to find a win with warrior. Might right. as well save it for last. Now, what do you think about Warrior versus Rogue as a matchup? If you think that your opponent's going to stick with the Rogue he just played. Yeah, I think uh, Warrior has a definite advantage yeah. in that matchup. They that's so, that's so what I'm thinking. Maybe you do go with the Warrior instead of the Paladin. Yeah, there's so many ways for Warriors to just stay stay in the game early on. Right. And they have so many ways to to gain health. A lot of times the Rogue just runs out of damage. And if the Warrior can... Uh, warriors can sometimes get into this position where they're playing the Aggressors. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they get a really good curb out early on with, like, Armor Smith, Cruel Taskmaster, sometimes they can just force the Rogue to play defensive. Sure. And if they're using their cards inefficiently early on to remove, like, weak warrior cards, yeah, then that's exactly what Warriors want to be. So then they can use that late game to just armor up, armor up, armor up. The Rogue's inevitably going to run out of damage. Yeah. All right. Well, we will see him going into game three what it's going to be. Do you think that he will stick with the Rogue, though? Yeah. He... he Roger does it. Well, yeah, I think he's going to stick with the rogue. Oh, no, going over to the lock. All right, interesting. This is bold. This is really bold. Mm -hmm. um, he might have been thinking that Trump was going to throw out the warrior next. Mm -hmm. But Paladin seems like the, the most likely choice just because warrior, of course, seems like that deck that a lot of people go with as their sort of ace deck. Mm -hmm. um, Paladin has, I think, a better matchup against Warlock than it does against uh, the Rogue. Okay. And so he was definitely expecting and hoping to play against the Warrior here with that Warlock switch. Yeah, absolutely. So he's got to be probably feeling maybe a little disappointed then to see the Paladin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if he had stick with Rogue and Trump had p taken the Paladin, Rogue is just great against right. Paladin. They have, they have so many tools. A lot of time, Blade Flurry can just lock them out of the game. Fan and Knives from, for Mustard for Battle is one of the cleanest ways to be able to deal with it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. But this matchup is still relatively even. Mm -hmm. We saw yesterday the power of the Paladin, though, when he gets the right draws at the right time because they can just completely negate a lot of what a Warlock can do, especially traditional Handlock because they have outdoor Peacekeepers for Giants, mm -hmm. DGH, Equality, and they put on so much pressure that sometimes just one of those cards at the right time can allow them to push through. Yeah. Well, Trump fans will be spamming da in chat right now as they see that <laughs> hand before the mulligans. Let's see what else he picks up. All right. Well, he's got the BGH already. In case it's a hand lock is what he's probably thinking. Feels yeah. pretty good. So this is the first game that Roger has not had either a Twilight Drake or Mountain Giant. That's right. Hand. Well, he's got three turns to tap into one. <laughs> That's very true. Let very true. Think. That would have been, I think, one of those coin tap situations. Yeah. Yeah, because you have neither, like you were saying yesterday. Yeah, the only thing is that he would have to play the Ancient Watcher mm -hmm. um, on one of the turns before he would hit um, 
like turn four because he'd overdraw or he wouldn't be able to play his Twilight Drake or Mountain Giant cleanly on curb. So what's the argument here between mini bot and hero power for Trump on turn two? I think he just wants to cash in on the hero power as much as possible. Mm. Okay. It's it's tough to say, but uh, Paladins have two different ways to look at this matchup. And Warlocks have a couple different ways to play it as well. You can go all out aggression and hope you draw into the qualities when you need them. Hope you draw into like the, the BGH when you need it or the cards like that. Or you can just hero power early on, still do almost as much damage, but play around cards like Hellfire and Shadowflame a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Uh, because right now, he's still putting on some pressure, but those cards just aren't going to do as much damage as they were, as, as they would have been before. Sure. All right, so both Ancient Watchers down and Sun Fury Protector. Going to keep his face safe for a little while longer. Still no threats. Yeah. They're hiding. They're tired of working. For great justice, they are hiding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, a Quartermaster. He could cash in on those little little guys. Yeah, that'll help him actually get through this wall. Yeah, it doesn't help him that much though. Mm -hmm. He'd still have to he'd still have to throw a lot of damage into both of these to get through it. Mm-hmm. Um I mean he could just wait. Yeah, I mean you can always yeah, get through one at least right now with one recruit and your shredder. Yeah, Shadow Flame is always a little bit mm, fairy dragon. A little bit risky to not play around. Right. I but wonder. he could have just like uh, hero powered and then waited to try and get a little bit more value out of Quartermaster the following turn. Mm. So he's probably, yeah, all right. Yeah. This is, he, cl he clears the board this way. Yeah. While still leaving a 3-2. Uh, so he plays around Shadow Flame. Yep. Uh, still doesn't overextend too much. Consecrate isn't that powerful in this matchup because usually the only other time you use it is when you're quality consecrating. Right. And a lot of times Paladins will have a board when the Warlock builds up a wall. So a quality mm -hmm. and just throwing your board into it is just about the same thing. So why the low thub over the Sludge Belcher? I feel like this isn't a turn the Paladin really wants to play spells anyway. I don't know. I, w I would like the Sludge Belcher there actually. That's what I'm thinking as well because that after you just played your spell, and you've only got a 3-2 on the board, that's not the turn you're going to play more spells as the yeah. Paladin. That's the turn you're going to start laying down some minions. So I'm a little confused as to why he would have gone with the Lotheb instead of the Belcher. What there. I can think of is that he just wanted as much power as possible. Yeah. Because Lotheb isn't really a, a leverage tool like it is against other classes. Mm -hmm. Paladin isn't going to burst you down with spells. They don't have big power turns with spells. You can't really predict a lay on hands because it's not yeah. really like a turn eight power play. Right. And uh, being able to do this in turn, not having a play after the low theb, being able to have a bigger body that you can hide behind the sledge belcher later. There you go. Uh, like forcing damage into it and then ha forcing your opponent to trade inefficiently into a sledge belcher to get past it to get to your low theb. Right. Oh. All right. Well, that whirling zapomatic. And then he's got the Belcher, too, to keep it safe. Finally, a Twilight Drake coming off the top here. Yeah, it's about dang time. Yep, seems like a pretty clear Hellfire play there. Kind of reset the board. But now you're already down to 16 health, and you don't have either of your Molten Giants. No, that's a little bit of a rough spot. It's a scary place to be. He's going to have to tap in order to try and draw into those, which is just going to give time for, um, for Trump to build up a board. Mm-hmm. Trump doesn't have really strong plays, though. I was going to say, this is a, a, a prime turn for Leon Hands. Yeah. You're not really facing too much damage on the board. Right. Your hand's starting to get thin. You don't have many options. You really want options here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, in this matchup, the eight health isn't as important probably in that situation as just getting some more cards in your hand. Yeah. Just throwing All out right. So now he picks up the Black Knight, too. That's a pretty juicy Black Knight. That but Defender of Argus really didn't have a point to it. Yeah, just pushing for more damage, I guess. That's a couple turns uh, that Roger's taken that I think a little bit questionable. Yeah, it seems like he was just throwing it out for the heck of it. 
And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. There's mm -hmm. not much difference than just leaving your Twilight Drake there. Yeah. Uh, and saving the Defender of Arcus for when you actually need the extra damage or right. the extra defensive stats. Because this is just a really easy Black Knight for, yeah. for Trump to throw out there. And he's not even making him work for it. It's just a big swing that was just unnecessary for Roger to put himself in that position. Right. Well, now Roger, he's got the heal bot to buy a little bit of time. There's always Juraxis, um to kind of try to get yourself back into this. But I usually probably want to say I'd save Juraxis until after I've gone through my heal bots. Yeah, and your Molten Giants is big as well. Yeah, exactly. Because Molten Giants, you can only... The you can't even play them until you're below. The least they can possibly cost you is six? Because you're down to one health? Yeah. Yeah. All right, but he goes for Jaraxxus anyway. Like it. It's bold. Yeah, he's like, you bold know what? If move. I'm going to win this game, you're gonna, I'm going to do it with the Eridar Lord of the Burning Legion himself. Yeah, and now Trump's got to be feeling great because he knows that there's not going to be an opportunity for, like, double Molten Giant, Sun Fury. Right, right. He just needs to draw into equality, and then he pretty much is guaranteed to win mm -hmm. is, is what it is. And even outside of that, he's still in a, in a great spot. Um, no potential for lethal here. I no, it doesn't no, look like it. Quite. Can't really summon enough minions to get those dream juggles that we saw yeah, you can put them out earlier four. in the day. Mm-hmm. And it looks like he's going to go for that. Going to put on as much pressure as he can. Going to force a heal bot out of the opponent here, probably. Yeah. Owl Shadow Flame might have to be a play. Oh, yeah. Oh, is he going to leave it alive? I guess with the heal All bot, right. he's still in a pretty safe spot. Yeah. Yeah, take the Silver Hand Recruit, you need to take that out right now because you're dangerously close to being within lethal range. Jaraxxus is one of those cards that when you see it, you need to finish Jaraxxus as quickly as you can, too, yeah. though. The longer Jaraxxus lives, the more he just outvalues you for just two mana every turn, you know? Yeah, and, and that weapon that lasts forever? Dread Infernal Shadow Flame, too. Is it, yeah, exactly. Dread Infernal Sun Fury, Dread Infernal Defender of Argus. There's... Yeah, Jaraxxus is one of those cards you want to finish as quickly as you can. Yeah. When he goes there. Hmm. This is when you need that equality. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Right about now would be great. Yeah, and you can see, Roger's got the silence in hand. He's got a siphon soul. He's got a shadow flame. Yeah, he's sitting in a pretty good spot. And clearing off this anti-kill bot is the right play. Mm-hmm. Just because you don't want to give him any better Shadow Flame targets. Right. Or anything on the board that's going to threaten what you have. He needs to make a Shadow Flame play here or he's going to be dead the next turn. Yeah. So probably just silence. Oh, silence his own Infernal in order to get it back up to six attack. I actually like silencing the Sludge Belcher so you can actually push through and clear the whole board. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, this is, silencing your own Dread Infernal is better, because you're leaving yourself, because you can attack first, mm -hmm. and then Shadow Flame. Right. Um, still taking the same amount of damage, still being left with the, the s just about the same board, except just a, a stronger Dread Infernal. Yeah. Yeah, and you can, you don't really have to worry about any burst coming out of a Paladin, either, of all the classes. Now, there's the equality. But if he, things start to get a little too out of hand with those six sixes. Yeah, but he needs but creatures. Let, yeah, what's he needs he like his, his second muster for battle. Yeah, that would be pretty much exactly what he would need right now to, I think, uh, give himself a chance to close this one out. But even a second muster for battle, as we can see, would get punished by the second Shadow Flame. Yeah, he needs muster for battle into a quality consecrate. Oh, into Quartermaster for a kill. <laughs> there you go. In, 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 in reality, this actually could be pretty hard for Trump to close out. Yeah, I think so. And again, the longer this goes, I think the more it plays right into Roger's strength here, which is just that in that hero power <laughs> once you go to Traxxas. Yeah. So powerful. Now he's got Dr. Boom, two six sixes. Oh, jeez. And he's like, yeah, so what? I'm at seven health. Yeah. Bring it. 
come get me. <laughs> seven health is pretty healthy against the Paladin. What are they going to do to get through seven health? Right, with an empty board like this, two quartermasters and not a single recruit. I've got the beast in my side. He didn't even need Molten Giants. No, no, he really like didn't. A now, a bit of a desperation play here, I think, from Trump. But I think he's starting to see the writing on the wall a bit, too. This is going to be really intense. Uh, just about impossible to outvalue Jaraxxus here. Mm -hmm. And he's... <laughs> he just puts him at six. Yeah, why not? Which one and should I shot? Yeah, exactly. Just, uh, that's... Short of Consecration coming off the top. That's got to be it. And even Consecration could wind up killing him with boom bots. Yeah. Well, there's the muster for battle that he needed, but that's not going to be enough. Well no. Nope. Well played comes out, and Roger is going to take a 2-1 lead. Well played. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Oblivion! <laughs> Sorry for that, for all of your ears watching at home. I, I couldn't. My ears. Couldn't resist the My Oblivion. Ears. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely an impressive win there, I would say. Um, choosing to go with the Jaraxxus before he saw either of his Molten Giants yeah. and before he even used his heal bot. Just, you know what? Here we go. It's not very often. Win this, it's going to be aggressively. Yeah, it's not very often that you can have a turn where you can safely Draxus mm -hmm. and live to tell the tale the right. following turn. But if you can do it, there's not really many times where it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, because those 6-6s six every single turn. Right are just, they're so devastating because especially with the double shadow flame, there's just so many combos that you can pull off. You, your opponent will never be able to build up a board. Yeah, just the mana efficiency of it is almost impossible to overcome if Draxus lives longer than yeah. three turns, maybe? Because at yeah. that point, he's already gotten, well, if it's three turns, he's gotten two six sixes at least because yeah. the first play, obviously, he can't use it. But he can use the weapon charge right away. Unless you save the coin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, definitely taking the win in impressive fashion using Jaraxxus to maximum effect. Now, we're going to go into the next game. It's Rogue. He's got to win with Rogue. He's got to do it, right? Yeah, and it, it could be a little bit tough. Because Trump has, of course, the Paladin and the Warrior, which are both decent against... Uh, oh, no. Paladin, no, actually. Yeah, Paladin, you feel pretty good as the Rogue. Yeah, so that actually w isn't going to be that hard. I mean, I imagine Trump's going to go with the Warrior here mm -hmm. just to try and sneak that first win in. Sure. Uh, to take it to a Game 5. We've said before that, oh, well, if you're going to have to win with the Paladin anyway, you might as well throw it out. But a lot of the players have been leaning towards the strategy of Trying to take the series as long as possible. Right, right. Yeah, just keep yourself in it at the very least. You yeah. know what I mean? That way you don't just immediately get eliminated. Mm -hmm. And I think that that makes sense, too, psychologically at least speaking. You know, like, hey, if, if I'm still in this, then I've still got a chance. Oh, and Trump does get the Warrior versus Rogue. Matchup he was looking for. Yeah, this is a really rough matchup for Rogue. It's just hard for them to just break through all that armor. Yeah. Uh, they... They want ma creatures in this matchup because they want to be able to force the warrior to spend a lot of his early turns playing super defensively mm -hmm. and take a lot of damage just clearing creatures out. And uh, there's some there's your mulligan strategy against warrior is a lot different than it would be against other classes. There's cards that you just wouldn't keep. Yeah. Um, unless you have like coin si isn't as strong against warrior because you'll never find a time to use that. Right. Because against their only two early drops. Acolyte of Pain. Both of them got three and four health, respectively. Yeah. Now, Prep Sprint, though, is if you have that combination in your hand, I'd keep that. He throws away one sprint, but he gets it Winds back. Winds up picking it right back up, though. That's a big power play, though. If you can coin Vala Teacher into Prep Sprint. Oh, yeah. That's ridiculous. Absolutely. And coin Vala Teacher usually doesn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. Unless the warrior is able to deal build up quite a bit of armor early on and is able to shield slam it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, dagger up and hit faces. Hit it. <laughs> there we go. Better do it. Yeah. All right, so Trump, too, finds himself here in a situation that he hasn't been in yet this weekend, down in a series. Mm -hmm. How do you think he's feeling psychologically? Judging by his face, I have no idea. <laughs> he looks focused. Yeah. He looks just like... We're tired. Maybe tired. Maybe yeah. a little bit hungry. <laughs> 
You just want to see Trump eat. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking with the, all of the production crew yesterday. I was saying one of the things that's on my, the top of my things I would pay to see list is uh -huh. Trump eating. Because you never see it. No. You watch his stream. He puts <laughs> up an overlay when he eats. Yeah. You never even hear it. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to hear it. It does I look would. like we're having a quick minor issue uh, with getting to see Trump's hand here. Um, but... We'll see what he's going to wind up putting down in response to this Violet teacher as we're getting back in up top. Can't deal with it right away. Yeah. Well, he can, actually. He does have an execute, so he can hit it and then execute it. Yeah. And that's the choice he winds up making. Yeah. Yeah, and again, Violet teacher is probably one of the scariest targets you see in the rogue deck. Mm -hmm. Until something gets uh, the Tinker's Oil on it, of course. Yeah. You know, but what else, really, in this matchup are you going to execute? And even though you have to take that face damage to be able to proc the execute, mm -hmm. you still have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't let him get out of hand with that. Shield slam in the 2-2. Shield two -two. slam in the 2-2. Two -two. Wow. Oh, okay. Bane of doom when you need it. <laughs> I think. Okay. So he's got Death's Bite to deal with this Azure Drake. Creature after creature after creature. But Trump just has those answers ready. Yeah. Ready and available. He did get the armor up, right? Okay, yeah. Sometimes I see that end turn on Spectator, and it just <laughs> worries me a little bit. Yeah. All yeah. right, so now that you see the opponent with... You just throw the other Azure Drake, just sacrifice it for the card draw? Yeah. Rough life versus Warrior. I mean, he's still doing damage with these cards. Azure Drake, when you're forcing him with weapons, I mean, he's at 21 health right now. That's more than you can hope for. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he does have a lot of longevity in his hand. He's got prep sprint mm -hmm. and a lot of card draw. So he's going to be able to last a long time. The one thing he needs... Th see, this... Dr. Boom is one of the toughest cards to deal with when you're a rogue. Right. Because a lot of times... I, I talk about all the time. One of the ways... The main ways you lose as a rogue is just getting pressured. And B Dr. Boom offers so much pressure because of the damage that you're almost guaranteed to take to your face mm -hmm. from the Doom bots. Because usually you're playing from an empty board. And uh, a lot of times you end up, that's a really clean way to deal I with it, but a lot of say. times you end up having to hit it with your face. Yeah. And then blade flurrying just to deal with it. And you take so much damage from hitting the bo Dr. Boom with your face plus the residual damage from the Boom Bots. Yeah. He's lucky that he could deal with it that cleanly. Yeah, that was nice. It uh, wound up working out pretty decently for him. But now we're going to start to see Trump just start to build up that armor, start to have. Big scary card after big scary card here with the Sylvanas and Alex Straza already in hand. Sludge Belcher to sneak things behind if he has to. Yeah. Well, this turn he can actually put on quite a bit of damage. If he re-daggers, deadly poisons, hit face, blade flurries, and then re and then SI agents. Mm. But it looks like he's just going to uh, just playing it a little bit slower and safer mm. than that. And just trying to chew through that armor as much as he can. And I guess that makes sense, right? Because that's the way you're going to win this match, is with that one big crazy turn before the warrior can get up to, like, 12, 15, even more armor than that. Yeah. I don't know if I necessarily like that, though. Mm -hmm. In this play, you're, you're holding on to one of your blade flurries, but you're doing the same amount of damage to face actually doing less damage to face, two, three less damage to face, and you're leaving the Shield Maiden on the board. If he had re-daggered, deadly poison, hit face, blade flurried, and then SI agent, the Shield Maiden, mm -hmm. um, he would have had less armor, he would have one less creature on the board, but the warrior wouldn't have the Shield Maiden. Yeah. And his creatures would have been, uh, hit the creature that he did have on the board would have been at least a little bit more protected because he wouldn't be facing up against the Shield Maiden. Right. The only thing I can think of why he went with this route of play was because he wanted to hold on to the Blade Flurry, because that is the only one that he has. Yeah. For maybe a little bit bigger of a board clear. Now, Trump is asking himself, I think, here, if he feels safe enough with his health total to Alex Straza right now. Yeah. I yeah. think so. And he does. Like I said, the one way you beat rogues is pressure. Yeah. There's not a whole lot uh, more pressure you can do than... Uh, Alex Straza coming and dropping you 12 health, was that was? Yeah, I think if you Alex Straza there, you hit base with the Shield Maiden. Mm-hmm. Because he's, he's, 
he already has a creature on the board, so he's going to be able to get oil anyway. Right. This gives him a guaranteed, like, target that he's going to get oil on. Yeah. Ooh, the sap. Sap on Alex Straza. Wow. So now that you've sapped Alex Straza, you have to finish him before. You you can't get him down to one or two health. No, you you have to actually kill. finish him. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know you just gave him that heal right back. Yeah. And now he's counting it up in his hand, too. He's got the South Sea deck hand, the oil, the flurry, the poison. I mean, it's possible. He might be able to do this. He you sludge belcher? He saps it? You could die. Ooh, okay. So Trump maybe knowing, uh, maybe making a read that he's in a bit of a sticky situation now off of that last play that the Rogue just made. Bit of a pickle. Yeah, if you, if you see your own Alex Straza get sapped, you're wondering, oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you serious right now? He's that means you kill. think you can kill me in one turn. Yeah. Kind of forces you to play the Belcher in that scenario. Yeah. All right. Well, this turn... Depends how much he wants to play around Brawl. Mm. He could make a lot of 1-1s one and be able to clear pretty efficiently. Yeah. Uh, he could Violet Teacher, Dan of Knives, eviscerate the um, Sludge Belcher. And then he could trade what he has left with the, uh, like the SI agent into the last slime, auto, a dagger into the other one. That would put him in range of Gromash and Cruel Taskmaster. Mm -hmm. So the question is, so without Sap available, he needs to effectively be able to deal 30 points of damage right now because the Sludge Belcher represents seven health. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Trump's sitting at 23 with his armor as well right now. So he has the mana to. Okay. Well, this puts him reasonably close to yeah. 15 health. Right. And a strong board. Mm hmm. That's true. So if he Alex draws this next turn, he will most likely still have enough damage to kill him. Mm hmm. Because he's got 8 damage Ooh. on board. Baron Gale. Yeah, he would though. have enough damage in hand. Hmm. That's tough. Yeah, Baron Gannon Baron Gannon seems reasonable, but also you're sort Brings of Brings you down to nine. Yeah. You can armor up afterwards. Um Well you have to armor up before actually Baron Gannon, because he's at the end of the turn. Yeah, after you played it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but it's your best chance of removing as much damage as possible. You're you're effectively taking two damage yourself, but you're removing five damage from the board. Right. He could um, like play Sylvanas and execute, or play Emperor and execute. Mm, that's still, yeah. Because he actually does have the potential to do 15 damage next turn. Yeah. Uh, with he's got eight damage facing on board plus Salsi Deckhand is 10, Eviscerate yeah. 14, uh, and the dagger would be 15. And you have to think if you're in uh, Trump shoes right now that he's probably got it. And if he Alex Shaw's is here, oh, he's. Wow. Wait, he's he can execute. He can execute. Okay, okay. okay. I was gonna say he's dead, isn't he? With the South Sea and the, he's already counting up. Roger is no, but wondering. He, he only needs three damage. That's not three damage. So with Thalnos, Eviscerate will be five. That'll bring him to ten. Then he'll be down to five. Dagger and South Sea. He does need a little more damage, so you got to start with Fan and Knives. Yeah, I think he needs two more damage here. That's it. That did it. <laughs> wow. There you have it. Blood Does he have mage? enough mana? Exactly he has seven mana. Yeah, he's got plenty of mana. I there it is. Blood Mage, Eviscerate for five, Swing with everything, Deckhand, and then Blade Flurry for two. Wow. He's got to make sure that he sousies before Wait. he Blade Flurries, though. He Eviscerated. Did he just miss Lethal, or are we bad at counting still? Okay, so he had uh, five damage on board. Yeah, and then he had five from, five eviscerate. from eviscerate. That's ten. And one, then two from, two from South Sea deck deckhand. One from the dagger. One, and two, and from, two the blade from the flurry. blade flurry. He totally just missed yeah, lethal. Yeah, he had seven mana total with oh seven no. mana. Oh, no. Wow. If Trump is able to come back into this game, we can't. We're, we've got to be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this silence is killing me inside, too. I need you to affirm <laughs> <All right. laughs> me. <laughs> we were wrong. We were wrong. We're going to go with we were wrong. 
that Roger knows better than us. He didn't have enough mana. What? Because he phantom knives first. You're right. No, he did no. have enough mana. Because he re-daggered at the end of the turn. Yeah. So he totally... Wait, no. Instant replay, please. Yes, we'll figure this out <laughs> after this match. I, I'm pretty sure he had it. Because mm -hmm. he... he, he Blood Mage, Fan of Knives, that was five mana total. He yeah. needed Eviscerate, Salsi Deccan, and Blade Flurry. He had a fresh dagger. Yeah, he had a fresh dagger at the, the turn, start of the turn. And he definitely had five damage on board. Yep. So that's exactly 15 damage that he had. Wow. Well, let's, I guess we can get back to the match. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to here. Yeah. He does have Sprint, so, mm -hmm. but he's running out of cards. And I don't know how much burn he has left. Oh, man. Oh, he's one. Now... Trump is one damage off. Yeah, Trump doesn't have... Oh, wow. He missed it. He had to have missed it. Yeah. Yeah. He. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Trump is one damage off with Grom Taskmaster. <laughs> Roger, I'm pretty sure, had lethal there. Yeah. He has, he has to Grom here, I think. He yeah. has to Grom and it's armor a, up. Yeah, Grom to clear, actually. Yeah. What? It's likely that Roger will still win, but if he doesn't... Yeah, if Trump gets back into this game and wins this game and Roger winds up going back and looking at this again and kicking himself, if, if we were right, which we'll have to verify... <laughs> we're never right. But we are never we are. right, but I'm, we, I think this is one of our most likely times that we were right. Yeah. We had two brains. <laughs> He had one brain. <laughs> oh, well, he picks up the sap here. That'll keep him alive. But, mm, yeah, yeah, it will. He's out of cards. He, he loses. He is. He's because out of cards. Because all he has to do is Grom, Cruel Taskmaster. Next turn, he'll take one point of fatigue damage. Yeah. That's 13. There it is. Wow. Okay. Wow. We're gonna have to. We're going to have to see this again. As long as Trump sees this, because he's got to realize that he's going to take a point of fatigue damage the following turn. Yeah. Just Grom Cruel Taskmaster well, wins Trump him knows, the game. Trump knows he's going to take fatigue. Trump is experienced of enough of a player, Is he, though? Because this is an automatic play. Yeah, it's true. Are oh, we Trump, have two don't, don't you miss it, too. No! Trump, the one time we were right. Just do it! For great justice, you have to. I'm trying to look at the the trajectory of his eyeballs. <gasps> he he armors, armors up! Oh no! He armors up! Oh my gosh, Tinkers! I'm done. I quit. We need a new caster. <laughs> what is happening in this game? <sighs> wow. Trump just realized it too. Oh no! He just Trump. realized it. No! <laughs> See, but oh. Roger still doesn't. Roger still it. can't finish him. So yeah. he's going to take two points of fatigue damage next turn. Which means Trump has to try to deal 10 right now. So he needs 10 damage. He has Fire War Axe. I don't think <laughs> he needs a way to he activate doesn't have, Grom. He, he doesn't, doesn't have, have it. Shield Slam? No, Death he's spent, too late. He Death Spite is too late. Base Trump. Bombs. Oh, no. Okay, we definitely had one missed lethal there. We need to go back and verify. On the Roger. 92% sure. Oh my goodness. What what a crazy game. Trump was handed this game on a silver platter. He really was, yeah. And then he said, Roger, screw your silver platter. You can have it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, look at Trump. There's no there's no way out of it. Yeah, no, he's out now. He's out. He was going to stay in the series. He can with one game to make it to the finals. He can Grom into the um, Earth and Ring Farseer and then armor up. Yeah. And in theory, he's alive. <sighs> okay. Hopefully someday we'll see Roger's hand. <laughs> oh, wow. Well wow. That's really rough. Jeez. And the sharp sword oil right on time.
Wow, poor, poor Trump. Ouch. He knows too. He realized it as soon as Roger tried to draw a card and took one damage of fatigue. Did you see the look on Trump's face? He's like, wait a second. I could have dealt 12. Like you could just, oh my goodness. What? <laughs> I have no words. I have no words. That was incredible. But anyway, Trump out of the tournament. <sighs> yep. There's always next week. He had a rough road ahead of him. Yeah. Um, he had to win uh, two matches in a row. He was down three to one. But that's true. That's still heartbreaking. Uh, yeah. I mean, he should have lost the game in the first place because Roger, we think, yeah, uh, missed that lethal as well. Uh, but that always, especially when you realize it right after. Right. And it, it knocks you out of the tournament. It's yeah. Really that that's you don't want to go out like that. You know, if mm -hmm. you're going to go out but you played your best, then you feel all right. You say, okay, maybe the card just didn't fall in my direction this time. No problem. I don't think I made any glaring mistakes or yeah. anything. Yeah. But when you go out like that in that sort of a fashion, that that's when it stings. Yeah. 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 Well, wow. Roger is going to move on to the finals, though. So he's only got to win one more best of five. Yep. And he gets that automatic invite to our land finals that will be happening in June. And uh, that's a pretty big deal. You get a trip to Southern California, get to come and join us at the uh, the Burbank Studios here. Yeah, you absolutely. You get to shake my hand. <laughs> An honor and a privilege, you DJ. Get a, you get a, a pat on the back and a high five. Yeah, you get to see me running around the studio yelling at uh, production assistants. Yeah. We can hold hands and go get falafel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Wow, so maybe not the highest level play we've ever seen on the Hearthstone Legendary Series. No, but um, definitely unfortunately, an but definitely awesome to watch. Uh, now, of course, we do have this new segment, though, uh, that we're presenting to you every week that we have a show now, the Pro Perspective. Let's go ahead and take a look at this week's puzzle that you can enter to win some packs on Facebook.com slash ESL Hearthstone. This was provided to us, again, by Freshka, and he finds himself in this situation with his own Sylvanas, facing down the Sylvanas of his stylish mage opponent. What would you do? What do you think Freshka would do? Submit your answer on our Facebook page. Slash ESL Hearthstone is the Facebook page. And if you are correct and you choose exactly what Freshka did, which we'll reveal later on in the show today, you'll be entered into a raffle to win five. TJ, and I'm waiting to hear your reaction on this one. Five classic expert packs. Yeah. I'm not going to have a reaction. But, but that in itself was a reaction. Yeah. I told you before that I was going to have the weirdest reactions to five expert packs that I could possibly have. He did. He told me that. What's better than five expert packs? You tell me. Six expert packs. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, of course, we want to thank our sponsors for making this contest possible. Thank you, Plantronics. Thank you, Gigabyte, for the continued support of the Hearthstone Legendary Series. We want to hear what you have to say as well, everybody watching at home, on all the other social media outlets. So go ahead and use that hashtag, HLS. And that's at ESL Hearthstone. And, of course, we do have other giveaways besides just this Pro Perspective segment. ESL.gg slash Legendary Giveaway. You can enter the raffle to win packs or maybe even one of the few lucky ones who will win a Plantronics rig headset. Very exciting stuff. Yeah. And is the Plantronics, Plantronics headset in packs? You put those on a weighted. That's right. I think Plantronics headset's a little better. Well, Everything we're trying to do here will make you win. You've already learned from the commercials that with Plantronics, mm -hmm. you're going to win. <laughs> All right. And, of course, PAX is <laughs> you're going to also help yourself win. Anyway, we will be right back with the semifinal number two. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Hearthstone Legendary Series. 